Blender has proved itself to be the best software for any 3D artist over and over. Yes, there are better applications out there like Houdini, Maya, and Cinema 4D that are industry standard. But the problem with those applications is that they are not meant to be a one-size-fits-all like Blender. For example, when using Cinema 4D, you are expected to use ZBrush for sculpting and not Cinema 4D. Though Cinema 4D has some sculpting functionality, it's not to the same level as Blender. Houdini is also great at simulations, but it's tough to create a full movie with it. You can still do it, but Blender offers better tools for animations. Blender may not be the best for simulation, animation, or texturing, but at least you can start a project and finish it without ever leaving. So how can Blender be used to make your first movie? To keep this video at a reasonable length, I will not be explaining the different stages of production, but I will be showing you what Blender tool you can use at specific stages of production, for example, script writing. While Blender comes with a script editor, this is not meant for writing scripts. Actually, it is meant for writing scripts, but not movie scripts. It's meant for writing Python scripts used for creating new functionality in Blender, like new operators or add-ons. Though if you are brave enough, you can still use it as a script editor as well for writing movie scripts. When you have a script, the next stage of production is usually storyboarding, and Blender has the best storyboarding workspace among all other 3D applications, and I'm sure soon it may become the industry standard. Here I'm talking about Grease Pencil. In this workspace, you can turn Blender into a complete 2D animation suite with brushes, layers, and everything you can ever want. You can make the entire movie right here, like many others have done, using Grease Pencil, which has become a popular tool for 3D artists. From this stage, you can start creating some concept art. These can be detailed sketches of key stages in your story. It's the look development stage, capturing the nature and atmosphere of your story and setting the visual mood of your story. Most artists use applications like Photoshop at this stage to create 2D drawings, but lately a lot of artists have started using 3D applications as a starting point for their concept art. Here are some YouTube channels that specialize in this type of art. At the concept art stage, you can start gathering reference images. A good application for this is PureRef. Uh, it makes collecting images really easy and fast. If you want to stay inside Blender, there is an add-on called BlendRef that basically functions like PureRef but inside Blender. If you don't want to use add-ons, you can also just drag your references directly into a different 3D viewer with overlays and extras turned off to make it less cluttered. I usually have this set off far away from my scene to make it easy to navigate to. Blender is, in my opinion, the best modeling tool for making characters and other models. Where it struggles a bit is in making hard surface models. Most 3D applications are not off the shelf good at hard surface modeling. They all rely on third-party tools like add-ons and plugins. If you plan on making a lot of hard surface models, you can get something like HardOps Box Cutters, as that a non-destructive tool for hard surface modeling that adds new tools, modifiers, and presets for hard surface modeling. As a Blender artist, you are likely a one-man army with a small budget or no budget at all. So you have to be careful how you approach your movie. Your movie pipeline can't be similar to how large movies work since they have access to resources that you may not have. So that's why this is not a guide on how to make Hollywood movies, but a guide on how to make your movie look like a Hollywood or large studio movie by taking all the shortcuts that are possible to take. Like making characters the traditional way would take days, if not weeks, that we don't have, but using something like block surfaces to easily block out the silhouette of your character will make it super fast for you. With something like block surfaces, you can even start posing and animating your characters before adding detail. That way you can test if the character design works or not before spending too much time. A comparable tool to block surfaces, but for non-organic objects like metals, is projection modeling. You can use it to model objects that are too complicated to model by hand or by sculpting. You just trace out the object's shape using curves from different directions, and the add-on does its magic to piece them together. While these are great tools for modeling, I can't guarantee the topology of the mesh you will get or whether this is acceptable for modeling standards, but what I can say is they will get the job done. As a solo artist or small team creating a movie, it's going to be a lot harder to create every model, every asset, 
or prop needed in your movie. You can either hire an extra hand to help or try out AI model generators like the Blender AI Library Pro. This is an add-on for Blender that you can use to generate models you want. They come out already textured, and you can also use the add-on to generate PBR textures or use its image to 3D generator. If you are not comfortable with AI, there are a lot of other tools that can help you create assets you need really fast, like the Procedural Building Generator 2, which can convert any mesh into a building in different styles. This is one of the reasons why Blender is becoming the most favored 3D application in the industry. Not because it has the best tools, but because everything you want to do, someone in the community has thought of a way to do it faster and easier. Say you want to have an explosion in your scene. Setting it up can take you quite some time, but an add-on like Chaos can set everything up for you in a matter of seconds. And all you have to do is simulate. And if you have a potato PC, basically a computer that is not powerful enough to simulate or takes too long, the VDB collections of explosions, clouds from True VDB Explosions Pack can be the difference between your project being finished on time or not. These simulations take hours, if not days, to set up and bake, so you can cut some of that time by just getting a pack like this. It's at this stage where most people start giving up after realizing how many assets they need and what time it takes to make them. Take an example of the number of trees in this small forest, generated by the forest generator. In a space of a few square meters, you have several tree species, grass, rocks, all textured with high resolution maps. Making a scene like this would take you at least a month if you tried to make it all from scratch. There are several plant libraries and add-ons that work a bit differently, like Botanique, which is one of the most updated and most popular add-ons for Blender with several features used to scatter plants and vegetation. These trees are usually quite high poly and really detailed, which is great, but that usually comes at the cost of additional render time. The makers of Botanique also have an add-on called Memsaver for optimizing meshes, reducing texture sizes to reduce render times. While it would have been easier to just list the steps you need to make a movie, it's also important for you to know what issues you may run into and how to solve them. Yes, creating a realistic forest with highly detailed trees will look cinematic, but what would be the point if your computer can't render it? So if you want a dense, large forest or something equivalent, you have to know the right tools to use. In this case, botanic trees or the forest generator may not be the solution, as these are meant for close-up shots, mostly. If you want to create large, dense forests, you will need something like alpha trees. This add-on does not use actual tree geometry, but it fakes the look by using a tree texture on a plane. While something simple like this may not look that great up close, if you are rendering a large scene with hundreds or millions of trees, it looks perfect and might be your only option. After modeling, you likely need to create materials and textures for your scene. This is the look development stage, where you decide how weathered your walls will be, how dirty or clean everything will be. Setting this up is not hard, but what is hard is creating all the materials and collecting all the necessary textures needed for creating those materials. For example, a single object can have over five textures layered on top of the PBR material. A texture for dirt, another for scratches, another to break up texture tiling, another to add decals, and more. A realistic material can be complicated to make, which is why a lot of artists opt for material libraries like the Sanctus Material Library that has procedural materials, decals, dirt layers, scratches, and more, so that they don't have to think of that stuff. If you just want decals to make your scene look more detailed and interesting, you can try using Decal Master to add decals. Materials are not the only thing you need for look development. Lighting is also a key part of it. Lighting can be broken into three categories. Subject lighting, which is the object in focus or taking up most of the screen, background lighting, and environment lighting. Most times when lighting, you always want to have separation between the subject and background. This means the use of rim lights on the characters. If you struggle with this light setup, an add-on like Light Wrangler can help. The background should not be brighter than the subject, and to make it look more interesting, you can use light gobos to add interesting shadow details in the background so that everything does not look flat. You also have the environment in general. This generally also works as fill light for your scene, and this is lighting for the sky bouncing around your scene to light up unlit areas. 
so it's important to have an environment lighting setup that looks interesting. Blender comes with the sky texture, but since we are looking for something interesting, I propose something like Pure Sky Pro. This comes with everything you need, from moving clouds, atmosphere, a day and night cycle, and more. So, you have modeled everything you need, set up the materials and lighting. At this stage, you should be ready for animation. Some make animations before creating materials and lighting, but most prefer after so that you can see the key poses in the final materials and lighting. Before you animate, you need to rig your models. Blender comes with Rigify for rigging characters, but the add-on Auto Rig Pro seems to be favored among professional animators. There is also the Auto Rig Pro library that comes with 25 different rigs, from dinosaurs, bears, birds, dogs, and more. If you want to rig vehicles, Car Rig Pro is the most used among the Blender community. After animation, you want to add extra effects to make the animation look more grounded, like particle effects. These effects could be dust, like when a character is running or falls, birds and insects, leaves, and more. Again, like most things we have looked at, Blender has the tools and systems to set these up yourself without any add-ons. But if you are in a rush for something like this, the particle library is a great option. Another effect that adds realism to your animations is cloth animation. What sets realistic animations apart from cartoonish renders is how detailed the cloth simulations are, and you can always see this in cartoons, games, and movies. When they want true realism, they go all in on the cloth simulation. While most studios use Marvelous Designer, Blender artists have Divine Cut, which produces comparable results. At this stage, you have a few more steps before you render, like creating the environment. This is going to be the place where most of your story is going to take place. You can sculpt it or generate it using tools like True Terrain to do most of the work for you. After that, you can do some compositing to make sure the colors are correct and balanced, and then render. Obviously, this is an oversimplification of a very complicated process, but it can also be one of the most fun experiences you'll ever have, seeing your vision take shape pixel by pixel, frame by frame. So go at it. Make your first movie. Blender has all the necessary tools, and what we've looked at is just half of it.